I honestly lost words after the end of the game. It was an absolute roller coaster of emotions, amusement, laughter, frustration, WTF moments overwhelmed me through the 2 hour and 20 minutes I spent playing it. You probably never heard of this piece of playable media, I'm glad I'll be the one introducing you to this little gem. Buckle up, because you're in for a treat, once in a lifetime experience. Do you remember George Carpenter's They Live with the great Roddy Piper? The one that Duke Nukem rephrased this line, I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass and I'm all out of bubblegum. It's time to kick ass and chew bubblegum and I'm all out of gum. Great movie as far as I remember, I haven't watched it in more than a decade, I should revisit it someday. Anyway, do you know that there is unofficial unlicensed video game based on the movie? It's very loosely based to put it lightly. There are no characters from the movie, the plot is completely different and the name is changed. It's not very surprising considering all this could get the developer in legal trouble. So how is connected then you may ask yourself? Well mostly through the sunglasses and quote unquote the plot. So for those unfamiliar with the movie I'll summarize it using the synopsis from IMDb. Nada, a down on his luck construction worker discover a pair of special sunglasses. Wearing them he is able to see the world as it really is, people being bombarded by the media and government with messages like stay asleep, no imagination, submit to authority. Even scarier is that he is able to see that some usually normal looking people are in fact ugly aliens in charge of this massive campaign to keep humans subdued. So they changed the name and the story is different. This could still be a decent game right? Right? To answer this I must walk you through the wonderful world of They Are Alive. Honestly the title sounds like an asset flip zombie shooter. When you start the game you normally expect to see the main menu. Not here, it's just a white screen. Then you start to hear this banger. Just listen to those beats. If the game was more popular, I'm pretty sure it will top all charts. Be sure to get some snacks because you're going to stare at the white screen for 3 to 4 minutes before finally seeing all the menus. This happens every time, so playing it one sitting is highly recommended. Or not. The main menu is a sight to behold and it doesn't have anything in common with the game. A computer with open city tray holding a tea, I guess. Then a naked woman in the background, maybe. At the bottom are the sunglasses and you can actually miss them, they are almost cropped out. And then for some reason a woman kisses the paper representing the menus. At the bottom right corner there are two items I assume are from an adult shop. It feels like they had some assets lying around and they threw them in a blender and this is what it came to be. Oh yeah, the game is made by a Russian developer, Orion. Their website is still up but since 2015 it doesn't have any updates. However, they have some games for sale on Steam. I bought some of them, even a physical copy of one of their titles, so there is a potential for future videos. The game starts with full motion video with narration. And this is Hicktown, world famous for its bribery. It's so dangerous that even when the citizens are taking out the garbage, they're telling their relatives their last wish. And it's the very place where our wonderful hero is living. Jim Fail is a larger than Jim Fail is a larger than life man working at the Acme facility. Acme facility? What did he do before? Oh, he will never tell you because he has signed the state secrets non-disclosure documents before the officials began to sell out the motherland. Our hero is at the facility with his friends right now. It seems they'll be dismissed soon. By dismissed, he means Just fired. Like many others. Why does a game that takes place in Russia, I assume it's there, have an American named main character? An Acme facility? Does this mean the Looney Tunes and the game are in the same universe? This is some multiverse of madness type crazy stuff. Finally, we are in the game and oh god, NPCs sound the same as they are all right next to your ear. Where is the director? 
How about he comes and tells us how we're gonna feed our families? Here you are with your shopping. This is what probably happens when you have zero budget to do audio properly. The entire audio of the game is poorly done. Voices are too low, music is drowning everything, and lines sound almost mono. Everything is flat. And also, the blur when turning, it's awful. Now, all the factory workers are getting sacked, but they are not having it and storm the building, attacking the security, which for some reason looks like a military personnel. Because I was too busy spinning around to show the blur, I didn't notice the game telling me to jump over the barrier and search for the director. Instead, I started punching one of the guards. It took me a while to realize I can't kill him, so I jumped over. Then I was attacked from behind by two guards. Here I found out that the melee combat is awful, especially if there is more than one person. Not that fighting with just one is any better, it's just that the encounter finishes faster, which means less pain. I knock them down and start moving up the stairs. Another two, then another two, then another two, and I get killed. You need to save manually or the pain will be a never ending cycle. The game doesn't have any checkpoints or at least they are very sparse. I think they are just in the beginning of the level. The save point puts me right back when the storming of the building starts, but this time I made a discovery worthy of something. However, it can make you sick. I found the guard's weakness, circle strafing. I just spin around them and hold the left mouse button. Riveting gameplay, I know. I hope you like this battle music, because this is the only track you hear through the whole game. This applies also to non-combat music. Ok, I over exaggerated but all tracks sound the same to me. I continue pushing forward, applying the same tactic to the other guards. There is a place you go through that is part projection room and part exhibition of stuff. What exactly is happening in this factory? Life belts, a jackhammer, a satellite holding one of the belts and a washing machine drum? It looks like they are making spy satellites and masking them with the production of life belts and washing machine drums. Nothing makes sense. Punching a few more guards lead to the director's office where you are ambushed, knocked out and thrown out. Getting your conscious back, the first thing you see is one of your co-workers that looks like he is about to drop a single, a rap song about the injustice of the system and life. Social commentary. That lip sync. Mwah. So your colleague suggests going to the capital and trying your luck there. You listen to him and end up in a job center. There a rude woman says you are too educated and there is no job for you and kicks you out. Here I start noticing how lines are cut off before even finishing. The only requests are from managers and salespersons. But I need a job. I have to live. Try a monthly course. Then you'll be able to work as a household appliances salesman. You'll find all the inf A whole month? I won't survive this. Listen, sister, I really need a job. Even a porter will suffice. Young man, didn't I make it clear? We've got nothing to offer to a person with your background. Get along, don't slow down the line. Next one, please. I didn't edit this in any way, and sometimes the characters are saying one thing and the subtitles another. Also, the translation from Russian is questionable. After you leave the room, a guy approaches you and offers you to offload the car. On the brink of starvation, Jim Fail accepts. Hey, I hear you need a job. Would you like to offload a car? I've just received a request. Sure I will. I'm an engineer myself, but it's not the time to be picky. I really do need the money. Here, this is the address we should go to. Find the foreman there at the warehouse. Tell him you're from Jack. Thanks, I can't thank you enough. You may have saved me from starvation. We'll settle this somehow. One should help the newcomers, especially if he was one himself. I love how all the loading screens are these pictures taken and run through an asset filter. The main character reaches the address that it turns out is a train yard or something like that. You start searching for the foreman. Here you find your first weapon. Can you guess what it is? Gordon Freeman has its crowbar. Doom Guy has a chainsaw. Master Chief has the energy sword. So what does Jim Fail uses? Try to answer in the comments below and see if you manage to guess it. Drum roll please. A car exhaust pipe. I bet you never saw that. The new king of melee weapons. 
Next to that is surprise surprise the most important element of the movie, the glasses. Jim Fell takes them but immediately gets attacked, circle strafing to the rescue. I actually forgot for some time that I have the glasses. Now, when you know about what the glasses can do, see who's alien who's not, see all the subliminal messages, you would think that the dev will create an interesting scenario to put them into good use, like trying to find who's the bad guy so you don't kill innocent people. Well, you're wrong. With one exception, I'll get to it later, the most important part of the movie is absolutely useless. You kill whomever you meet, so the glasses are pointless. So you push forward and continue to wag the same two NPCs over and over again. Even a group of enemies are no match for the strategic mind of Jim Fell. If you're getting dizzy from the footage, try to imagine playing the game. It wouldn't be that bad if there was no full body motion when you swing. Combine that with the blur and strafing, it's a recipe for a headache. At least you have regenerating health that is a bunch of pills for some reason. After killing all of them, you open a manhole in the middle of the building and enter the sewer system. Well, it might not be exactly sewer, but closer to a maintenance level with pipes, switchboards, etc. There you overhear two homeless people talking. Then I notice the main character is leaning back and forward when standing still. Why? Is he drunk or has a history of substance abuse and that's why the health bar is a bunch of pills? This game offers more questions than answers. You go to the two hobos and they have a nice cozy place with a big TV, DVD player, fridge, sofa and a radioactive light source. It's glowing from everywhere. Those guys are not interactable and I start wandering around their place trying to find my way out. I was stuck at this part for at least 15 minutes. Can you guess how you're supposed to continue? Write your suggestions in the comment and if you have 2 out of 2 correct answers, your reward is playing through this game. Here it is. You need to stand in front of those two guys and they will start talking to you. One of them will tell you to get him a beer and when you go to the fridge, the aliens burst in and you start shooting them. Then it will unlock all doors. How? How are you supposed to know that? Until now, nothing in the gameplay suggests this is even a viable option. Why would you do that to the player? Also, the first time I entered this level, it didn't even load properly. The light is supposed to be hanging from the ceiling. Here's where I tried the glasses for the first time. The best way I can describe it is like the they've put a piss filter. Your vision gets wavy and yellow like you are drunk and someone is relieving on top of your head. So the aliens spawn in and you blow their heads with the revolver you found a minute ago, lying near a fridge. It actually just appeared in my hand, I didn't even notice it before looking up the footage. You make your way through the maintenance level, getting stuck at every door frame, despite the fact the shadow does show the character being slim. You eventually you end up outside of a warehouse, overhearing the aliens talking. We even used to call for reinforcements. Our enemy was prepared. Do you think it was an information leak? I don't know, but we need to urgently report all of these to our superiors. Let's head to the base. So the race is called Aquarians. How does the main character know? It's anybody's guess. One of the aliens ended up in front of my face and somehow he didn't see me. I thought this was going to be a stealth section, but less than a minute later a different one saw me and all hell broke loose. This small part here illustrates the quality of the AI. Dump as a brick. They can't even qualify to be a crash test dummy. They get stuck in the environment, charge you head on with a melee weapon with no self preservation and when enemies with guns show up they have just two things in their mind, make a couple of steps and shoot or move in one direction then go back and take a shot and until they finish their movement they don't even shoot. So anyway I started blasting, killing all the guards in the storage area and here is the one cool idea that they did with the glasses. You need to put them on here so you can see a hidden door that leads to an alien secret area. Gameplay wise, that's it. Wearing them or not doesn't make any other difference besides maybe giving you a headache. You go through the door and descend reaching a room with a very nice view of two aliens discussing their plan.
All the assembly operations are moving on time. The object is near its finish. We should set up three more sections and then try the test launch. What's the suggested range? At least 500 kilometers. And what's our cover service doing? According to our data, no one guesses about the object's true purpose. Everyone's assured that one of the local cellular operator expands its signal. Excellent. We were never closer to our dearest wish. Once the super hypno emitter starts working, millions of natives will dash into the shops to buy the goods and run into our banks for the credits. They will all become our slaves. So they are politicians? Money is their goal? Those aliens are no different from us. Then you get attacked. Dealing with the guards, I try to go through the same invisible door, but opening it reveals more aliens waiting to fill me with lead. My gamer sensor started tingling when I saw the fire extinguisher, so I shot it, hoping the explosion would take care of the three enemies. However, it dropped on the ground and started flying towards me and blew up in my face. Second attempt. I didn't put the glasses. The aliens entered through the door and because I didn't wear them, they were invisible and started shooting me. Great implementation of the only cool feature. It took me a few more tries, but I eventually got out of that place. Just before exiting the level, I stumble on something relevant to the movie. If you put the glasses and look at the billboards around the area, you can see the subliminal messages the aliens put on them. Pretty cool, but that's the second nicest thing I can say about the game. So you go to some building to destroy the emitting tower and you start from the underground parking. For the first almost 20 minutes, you hear this deafening alarm constantly in the background. Very fun. Here you face an entirely new enemy. Robots that look like humans shooting you with laser guns. There are two notable things at this level. The first is that you use the glasses to go through an invisible teleport and the second is the best idea for an enemy. An ATM. They come out of the wall, run towards you and crawl after you dismember them. You reach the top where is the antenna and oh god, this is hideous, like a bull sack with tentacles. You go through a teleport and appear on an alien spaceship or dimension, I don't know, somewhere. Welcome to the frustration. My patience started running out in the previous level because the robots are bullet sponges but this place takes everything to entirely new highs. This level is the worst for one reason, the weapons. I haven't talked about them, so let's do it now. In general, they are awful. Functional, but doesn't have any punch to them. You have a revolver, shotgun, Uzi and a laser pistol. None of them feel satisfying to use, from the animation, to the sound, to the enemy feedback or the lack thereof. They suck. The most reliable method of killing the enemies is a headshot. However, it feels like every other bullet does less damage. What I mean is that the same enemy can die from a single shot to the head or two. It's so random. Since you fight the same aliens repeatedly, this is very noticeable. The most infuriating thing is how you get the ammo. By killing enemies, they drop it. But the game is so stingy and you always feel at the edge of running out of it. Until the last level it was tolerable, but then you fight so many enemies and you rarely get drops. Combine that with the inconsistent headshots and bullet sponging enemies and you have recipe for disaster and frustration. There is one area at the last level full of robots that take so many bullets, there is no place to hide to regenerate your health, so I just keep fighting them and run directly to an elevator to get me out of this place. Riveting gameplay, I know. Remember I mentioned earlier I had issues walking through an open door? Here you need to crawl through a vent. This was so frustrating to say the least, but somehow, after a couple of minutes of trying, I managed to squeeze in. However, I didn't crawl, just stand up and managed to glitch myself above the vent and see a lot of this level.
So there I am, finally facing the chief alien. I have 11 bullets in the Uzi and 5 shots in the laser gun. He is in a vehicle armed with rockets. This is my moment to shine. I see pillars in the arena so I thought to myself he needs to shoot them down and the place will crumble on us. I'm willing to make this sacrifice as long as I save the planet. The aliens start telling me how we destroy the planet, I agree, and the Air Force their picnic place, for some reason. Also, we owe them everything, all our possessions. Wait a minute, the final boss is Chief Bezos. It's now or never. Ugh, this is 1 minute and 40 seconds unskippable cutscene and it's boring to listen the same thing over and over again. I had to watch it two more times because I forgot to save, so it's now or never. It's either me and planet earth or them slaving us buying more stuff from amazon. Back on track. So I start hiding behind the pillars and waiting for the place to crumble. Nothing. I started shooting. I run out of ammo. Nothing. So how can I defeat this great evil? There is one thing left to do. With nothing left to lose, I charge bravely head first with the car exhaust and beat the shit out of him. The new king of melee weapons in video games ladies and gentlemen. And then the weirdest ending. You end up back in the job center and getting a job. It's probably in an Amazon warehouse. Um, what? What, is, what does it mean? Was Jim Fell daydreaming? Did he take something? As I mentioned earlier, the game opens more questions than gives answers. Let me show you the whole list. So that you could choose a decent place for yourself. Wait a moment please. From all the movies you can rip off, how do you choose they live? Looking at the developer's catalog of released games, it's no surprise they made a game based on a movie. Half of their titles are heavily influenced by books or other video games. The description on some sound too familiar to the source material. From all their games with English translation, I'll probably cover Hell Forces just because it looks so bad. One of the biggest drawbacks of all of their games is the use of Nvidia's physics. I tried to re-record some footage for the video but after the installation of a new SSD the game stopped working and after 10-15 minutes of searching and trying I gave up. It's not worth it. I didn't go into a depth about the levels because you can't get more linear than this and they have very uninspired architecture. What I found extremely funny when I checked the page for their life was the description. I started chuckling when I put it through Google. I'll read it for you. Moscow is the capital of our country, so I was right, the game was set in Russia. It is here that all conceivable and unthinkable entertainment, debauchery and other human vices are concentrated and it's here that all financial crises originate. And you are a simple engineer from the outback who decided to start his worthless life from scratch and came to the capital to work. And here, such magical glasses, aliens, and awakened patriotism, the game is called Patriot in Russian, giving strength for a new breakthrough which will sure lift the country from its knees and send back the uninvited invaders. Features Addictive plot on the verge of reality and absurdity. You are on point about the absurdity, but other than that, what plot? It's just random series of events with no coherence, a sea of humor, very unintentional, banter, blair and the opportunity to get even on the hated townsfolk. They are not even humans, what are you smoking about? A variety of weapons, karma floor exhaust pipe included. Yeah, sure, 4 weapons that suck and pointless melee one, which I wouldn't be that proud to include in the description. Life situations, no censorship and restrictions. You literally designed one of the most linear games I've ever played. No exploration, no secrets. Literally a tunnel ride without the fun. I call this feature bullshit. Not recommended for minors, people with mental disabilities and pregnant women. And to any sensible person.